In the previous video, we looked at how to work with the player input component for setting up local multiplayer games. The player input component is one of two necessary components required when creating local multiplayer games. In this video, we are going to look at the other required component, the player input manager. We will create different examples of local multiplayer games, including co-op based games, split screen games, and two player games. Local multiplayer is where two or more players are using the same computer and same screen but different input controllers, such as two gamepad controllers. This is not to be confused with online multiplayer which is different. The player input manager component keeps track of and manages each player that is spawned into the game by using their player input components. Notice that each player has a unique ID and an assigned input controller. The player input manager allows each player to control their own characters on the same computer using either keyboard and mouse or gamepad. I have created a new blank project in Unity 6. Go to window and open the package manager. Ensure that input system is installed from the Unity registry and using at least version 1.9 or above. In this series I am using version 1.11. If you want to follow along with this project, install Cinema Machine version 3 and you can find the asset pack to install from the video description below. If you have already downloaded the asset pack from a previous video, reopen your project to follow along with this video. In this section we are going to set up a local multiplayer co-op example. If you do not see the input system actions asset or you accidentally delete it, Go to Edit and Project Settings in the Input System Package section. Input System Package version 1.8.2 and above allows you to create and assign a default project wide action asset with predefined input actions. Double click to open the Input System Action Asset. I am going to create a new action map for the multiplayer characters that feature a fly input. An action map is essentially a collection of input actions that are logically grouped together. You can organize them in your specific game context. So here in our example, we need a different behavior for moving versus flying behavior. The player action map contains all the actions we need. So we can right click on this and duplicate and then rename to fly. Add a new action and call it fly. For the binding, click listen. Press the right shoulder button on the gamepad and assign it. This is using the gamepad control scheme. Add a new binding. Listen for the left shift button on the keyboard. This is using the keyboard and mouse control scheme. By default, a button returns data only when pressed. This is fine in most circumstances where you press a button and perform an action. However, I want the player to power up the rocket pack and fly as long as the fly button is held and stop flying when it is released. To achieve this, we need to add an interaction of press and change the drop down to press and release. Now it will return data both when it is first pressed and when it is released. Do this for right shoulder as well and save the asset. Go to the input system scripts folder and open the player controller script. We will use send messages from the input player component. Add the on move function and get the vector2 data from the value and pass it into the move amount variable. Do the same for on look. For the fly input, create an on fly function. I am passing the input value into a variable called button to make it clear that this is a button input and not a value input. Check if the button is pressed and run a function called start flying. This has already been created for this script. Then check if exclamation mark in code meaning button is not pressed, which is how we check when the button is released. Run a function called stop flying. Go to the art and prefabs folder and open the player one prefab. In the player one prefab, ensure the player input components behavior is set to send messages. Change the default map to fly, so now it will enable the fly action map when the game starts. The player prefab is now ready to be spawned into the game, so we can now move on to adding a player input manager to the scene. Go to the scenes folder and open the local multiplayer scene. Go to the manager object and add a player input manager component. The player input manager will handle the spawning of characters into the scene. It will also track each character, allowing you to use different controllers to play as each character. 
drag the player one prefab into the player prefab slot. The prefab in this slot must have a player input component on it for it to work. The player input manager recognizes different players based on different controllers, which are defined in the input action asset using the control scheme. For a simple co-op game where two or more players share the same screen, we can use the join behavior of join players when button is pressed. This allows each player to spawn in when they press any button on either keyboard or gamepad. I want to limit the numbers who can join to just two. We want to ensure that only one camera is enabled and following at least one of the players. Create a player spawn script. Ensure it is using the input system namespace. Add a public transform array. Add a private integer to track a player count. In a public function called onPlayerJoined, add a return type of player input. This will get all the data from the player input for the spawned character. Set the transform position for the character to the spawn points position based on the player count integer. Check if the player count is zero. This is the first player to join. Get the player controller script and run a function called switch on camera that will switch on the camera for only a single player. Then increase the player count by one. Drag the player spawn script onto the manager object. The player input manager sends the message on player joined each time a player joins, which will run the function we just wrote. There are two empty game objects in the scene that are set as spawn points. Drag these into the spawn points array. During gameplay, each player joins when different controller buttons are pushed. They spawn into the scene and the camera follows the last spawned character. And we now have a simple local multiplayer co-op example. The player manager also allows you to easily set up split screen. You can divide the screen by as many controllers as you have. First open the player one prefab and switch on the player one camera. This is required for the split screen to work. Drag the player one camera into the camera slot of the player input component. In the player input manager, check the enable split screen checkbox. Modify the player spawn script slightly, removing the if statement as both characters should now have the camera switched on. This script now simply moves each character to the set spawn point. During play mode, player 1 joins when pressing the button, and when player 2 presses a button the screen subdivides. However, at the moment both cameras are following player 2. The Cinemachine brain for both characters focuses on the last spawned virtual camera, so we need to write a script to override that. Create a script called Camera Focus. Add the Using Cinemachine namespace at the top. Add a public Cinemachine brain variable. Add two I Cinemachine camera variables. I have called them Cam A and Cam B. In the start method, get the Cinemachine camera component for both Cam A and Cam B. This will retrieve the same camera for both, but that is intentional. Set up the parameters for the camera override. Define the layer ID to override, then set the priority, weight of the new camera and time it will take to blend to the new camera. Access the brain and use set camera override. The parameters are set, the layer, the priority, then the two cameras to blend, cam A and cam B, then the weight and then the blend time. Drag the camera focus script onto the virtual camera. Drag the player one camera into the brain slot as the player one camera has the Cinemachine brain component. During play mode, the two characters spawn in and we now see the correct cameras focusing on the correct characters. You can add as many players as you like, adding more spawn points and moving them into place. Here I have four players sharing the screen and controlled independently by different controllers. So far, we have been spawning in only the player one prefab. However, you may want to set up multiple characters and spawn them as player one, player two, etc. This is especially useful for fighting games. In this example, I have two spawn points. The left one is rotated 90 degrees on the Y rotation axis. Notice the blue Z arrow is facing spawn point two. The one on the right is rotated minus 90 degrees on the Y rotation axis. The blue Z arrow is facing spawn point 1. This will ensure the two characters will be facing each other. I will add a scene camera and align with view so the game view matches the scene view. Open the player 1 prefab, 
Because we are using the scene camera, we can switch off the player one camera and virtual camera. Ensure to set the camera slot on the player input component to none. I will also change the default scheme to gamepad. This ensures this character can only be controlled by gamepad. Open the player two prefab and add the player input component to the player armature. Set the default scheme to gamepad as well. So now both characters will be controlled by gamepads. The default map should be on fly and the behavior should be set to send messages. The player one camera and virtual camera are already switched off. In the scene, remove the player spawn script component from the manager object. Uncheck the split screen and change the join behavior to join players manually. When this is set to manual, we can handle the player join by script. And this is how we can spawn characters in immediately when the game starts. We can also have a variety of different characters able to join. We also want a max player count of two. Create a new script called player join script. Add a public transform variable with two spawn point entries. Add a public game object variable with two entries for player one and player two. In an await method, instantiate player one at spawn point one position and rotation. Do the same for player two. As long as the players have a player input component, spawning them in manually like this will allow the player input manager to automatically find the characters and allow the users to control them with different controllers. Drag the player join script onto the manager object, drag in spawn points one and two, then drag in player one and two. During gameplay, the two characters spawn in immediately. They are facing each other and can be controlled with two gamepads. And that brings us to the end of this video. We have looked at setting up three different types of local multiplayer games using the player input manager component. This also brings us to the end of the input system series. Over the course of the seven videos, we have looked at creating actions in the input system asset, scripting for the input system, adding mobile controls for character movement, using the input system with the UI toolkit for navigating menus, in-game input rebinding, which allows players to select their own input controls during gameplay, and setting up local multiplayer games using the player input and player input manager component. To find out more, click on the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching.